Good morning and happy Wednesday from Cashers, North Carolina. We are a week out from Ash Wednesday, and I hope that all your Lenten disciplines are going well, including this time of prayer together. It's another beautiful day out there, and so you're going to see it a lot more than you see this mug. As we center ourselves, let us get ready to pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. And from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious Spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. As the days lengthen, and the earth spends longer in the light of day. Grant that I may spend longer in the light of your presence, O Lord, and may those seeds of your word, which have been long buried within me, grow, like everything around us, into love for you and love for people, to become a visible declaration of your lordship in my life. Grant, Father, that this Lent there may be a springtime for my life in Christ. Amen. We continue reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 3. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partners of Christ if we hold fast our first confidence to the end. As it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Now who were they that heard and yet were rebellious? Was it not all those who left Egypt under the leadership of Moses? But with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not those who sinned? The bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that he would, that would never enter his rest, if not those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of their unbelief. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Lenten canticle comes from 1 Peter, chapter 2. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. 
Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 2. When Jesus was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone, for he himself knew what was in everyone. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time? into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we focus on this wonderful picture of creation, let us pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now these prayers, the first from William Barclay, for the confession of our sins and for forgiveness. Forgive us, O Lord, for everything that has spoiled our home life, for the moodiness and irritability which made us difficult to live with, for the insensitiveness which made us careless of the feelings of others, for selfishness which made life harder for others. Forgive us, O Lord, for everything that has spoiled our witness for Thee, that so often men and women would never have known that we had been with Jesus and pledged ourselves to Him that we have so often denied with our lives that which we have said with our lips. For the difference between our creed and our conduct, our profession and our practice. For an example, which made it easier for men to criticize thy church or any other sin. When we think of ourselves and of the meanness and ugliness and wickedness of our lives, we thank Thee for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Grant unto us true penitence for our sins. Grant that at the foot of the cross we may find our burdens rolled away. 
and so strengthened us by your Spirit, that in the days to come we may live more nearly as we ought. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And this prayer by Richard Benson for those in despair. Comfort, we ask you, most gracious God, all who are cast down and faint of heart in the midst of the sorrows and difficulties of this world, and grant that by the quickening power of the Spirit they may be lifted up to you with hope and courage and enabled to go upon their way rejoicing in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this prayer from Archbishop William Temple in the early 20th century. O God of love, we pray thee to give us love. Love in our thinking, love in our speaking, love in our doing, and love in the hidden places of our souls. Love of our neighbors near and far, love of our friends old and new. Love of those with whom we find it hard to bear, and love of those who find it hard to bear with us. Love of those with whom we work, and love of those with whom we take our ease. Love in joy, love in sorrow, love in life and love in death, so that at length we may be worthy to dwell with thee, who art eternal love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Go and be of good courage, good faith, and I will see you next time. God's peace.